The rule we need to remember for functions is that every input can only have one output. We can look at these in multiple different forms to decide if something is a function or not. The first one that we're going to look at is a table. The best way to check these is to draw a mapping diagram. So we take all the x's or the inputs and put them in one bubble and we take all the y values or outputs and put them in the other bubble. So that means the first bubble represents your domain and the second bubble represents your range. When you list the numbers in your mapping diagram, never repeat numbers. So you don't want to write the same number twice. So the x's are going to be negative 3, negative 1, 2, and 4. The y values, the 4 happens twice, so we're only going to write it one time. So it would be 1, 4, and 7. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use arrows to match up the numbers from the x's with the y values that they go with. So if we look in the table, negative 3 goes with 4. So I'm going to go from negative 3 and make my arrow that points to 4. Negative 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 7, and 4 goes to 4. Now here's what's really important. See how every single number has only one arrow that comes off of it. That's how we know that yes, this is a function. So we would say, because remember our rule is it has to be written in complete sentences, we would say yes it is a function because each input has only one output. You should be sure to use the words input and output in your explanations. Each input has only one output. Okay, that's the definition of a function is that each input has only one output, so you need to make sure that those are the words you use to explain why. Now, just to point out, do you see how here I have two arrows that point to the same y value? That's okay. What we cannot have is two arrows that come from the same x value. Okay? Looking at graphs, we're going to use what's called the vertical line test. Now what you want to do is take your pencil and just slide it along the graph vertically. And you can see that anywhere I draw a vertical line on this graph, it never touches the graph more than one time. That's how we know that it is a function. If it touches the graph in two places, then it is not. So your answer to explain would be, yes, it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Passes the vertical line test. Please don't abbreviate words like because or to or I using language that you would use in a text message. That's not appropriate for the kind of answers that you would be giving on a test. With ordered pairs, the idea is exactly the same as looking at a table. Again, I suggest doing a mapping diagram. Remember that the first bubble stands for all of the x's. So we look at x's first. Negative 2, negative 1, 4, negative 1, and 1. Again, don't repeat any of them, and you should always write them least to greatest. So the smallest number is negative 2, then negative 1, then positive 1, then 4. Then for the outputs, we're going to look at all the y values. It goes, let's see, we have 2 three, four, and five. So again, to decide where to put our arrows, we're going to look at one ordered pair. Negative two goes with positive three. Negative one goes with five. Four goes with two. Negative one goes with four. And positive one goes with three. So we can see right here, this one is not good because negative one has two arrows that come off of it. So the answer this time would be no, it is not a function because negative 1 has two different outputs.
And that's how we decide if something is a function.